Hey guys, welcome to the 191st C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, we're going to continue working on our reader class. So, in the previous tutorial, we read strings, and in this tutorial, we just really have to read characters. So, we're just going to create a method right here that will read a character at the current position. So, we're going to say public character read uh, character. And then we're just going to have our binary reader read a character at the current position. So we're going to say br.readCharacter, just a single character. And then we're just going to have it return the character that it read to the caller. So we're just going to say return here. And whenever the user calls this method, it will basically just read a character at the current position and then return it. Alright, so there really wasn't much to that method, but in the next method we just have to read characters. So just a character array. So we're going to say public character array read characters and then we're just going to have it return on the characters read at the current position. So we're just going to say return br.read characters. And we just need to have the user actually pass the amount of characters that they want to read through this method. So we're going to say int amount and then we're just going to have it pass that amount uh, right through that read characters method in the binary reader class. All right, and you may be wondering why we're not having it reverse this. Well, that's because characters are almost never stored backwards. So if you were trying to read like a character array or something and they were stored, like you're never gonna see like Adam written backwards. You're never, like M, A, D, A. You're just, you're just never gonna see that. So it's always written forwards. If you wanna throw that in there, that's up to you, but I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. All right, so now our reader class is complete. So I highly advise you to put in summaries, like I've been saying, just put a summary in for each method so you can tell the user what each method actually does. But now that we have the reader class complete, let's just go ahead and make sure that it works. So we're going to go right here and um, on our form, just make sure that you have a button and then just go ahead and double click on it. Alright, and then you're going to want to make sure that you're using your namespace that you created. So remember inside of our class file, I named mine Adam's IO, and chances are you didn't name yours Adam's IO. You probably named it something else. So just make sure that you have that um, namespace you're using that. All right. So now we're just going to want to create a new open file dialog so we can actually access a file. So we're going to say open file dialog OFD equals a new open file dialog, and then we're just going to show that file open file dialog. So we're going to say if open file dialog dot show dialog equals dialog result dot ok, meaning the user actually did select a file in the open file dialog. Then we're just going to open a new reader, and the reader is the class that we created right here, called reader. So we're just going to say reader, oops, reader, I'm just going to call it r and set it equal to a new reader. And then as you can see here, we have two options. We can pass through just the path to the file that we want to read, or we can pass through the path to the file that we want to read and the byte order. And defaultly the byte order will be set to big endian because remember we set that. So we're just going to say OFD dot uh, file name because we don't need to change the endian type, it's fine big endian. Alright, and then we're just going to have it read um, an int32. So we're going to say message box, oops, message box dot show r dot read int 32 and then we're just going to want to convert that into a string and I'm putting an x in there so that it'll return it in hexadecimal so that we can actually see if it did read it correctly so if we were to save this file right here and have it read an int 32 right at the beginning we should get 0 0 4 1 0 0 6 4 let's just make sure that this works open that untitled file on my desktop and we get 410064. And the reason that it didn't put two zeros at the beginning is because there's no need to. It's like the same thing as putting one instead of 0001. It's the same thing. All right. So now we know that our reader works. You can go ahead and go through and make sure that every single method works. And if it doesn't, just go back to the tutorial that um, I taught you how to do that in. So say your read unicode string method doesn't work just go back um, to the tutorial i think it was previous tutorial we learned that so just go back to that tutorial and make sure that your code is the same as mine all right so see you guys